kapwa ko Pilipino Ipag malaki ang galing na meron tayo Ilantadang likas nating talento At magdala ng saya sa mundo Sa harap ng pagsubok ay di susuko Para sa pangarap ay pusigido Magpakitang gilas na pagpapatalo Ipagdiwang natin ang Pilipino Mula noon at hanggang ngayon, talento natin ng vida Mula sa simpleng bakuran hanggang entablado natin ipakita May pagsubok man ng Pinoy, pinalalakas ng saya San man tayo sa pulo, tumbe, shibay, lakay, amiga Sama-sama pakita, ang galing natin kakapa Sa kapwa ko Pilipino Mataas ang sikat ng araw sa isang napakagandang umaga dito po sa Subic Bay para nating pagsikat ng araw sa larangan ng sports. At yan ang ating himayin ngayong Sabado ng umaga sa inyong paborito kasama sa almusal, Edi Pano. Bango na! Power and play na! Magandang magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat mga kapatid. Nagbabalik po ang power and play. Hatid sa inyo ng Cherry Loom, ang Yerong May Aluminum at ng Cherry Tigo. It's fun to drive. And we are coming to you live from the music room ng Asea Beach Resort in Subic Bay. At kami po ay nagpapasalamat muli sa Asea sa pangunguna ng ating kaibigan si Mr. Romel Sitin and of course ang kanilang um, uh, events uh, manager uh, si Melissa Corilla and the rest of the staff ng uh, Asea Beach Resort here in Subic Bay sa kanilang pagtanggap muli sa Power and Play. Maganda magandang umaga po sa lahat ng ating ta tagapakinig sa Radyo 5 92.3 News FM and of course sa ating pong, uh, mga nanonood sa 1PH on Signal TV as well as those on live stream sa ating Facebook pages ng 1PH, Radyo 5 at ng Power and Play. Ang dami po natin pag-uusapan ngayong umaga nito. Ang dami natin pagkakausapin uh, dahil nagbabalik na ang sports. Yes, sports is back mga kapatid. With the uh, alert levels going down, the cases going down, marami na pong pahintulot para maglaro na muli ang mga national teams at pati na ang collegiate sports. Kaya mamaya, makakausap natin mismo ang mga head coaches ng dalawang koponan sa UAAP. Si Coach uh, Derek Pumarin at si Coach Gino Manansala ng Lasal at ng UST respectively. Mamaya din po, makakausap natin si Coach Tim Cohn ng Barangay Hinebra dahil magbabalik na ang mga higante sa PBA. Yan po ang mga imports na papasok sa Governor's Cup. And talking about imports, we have an exclusive interview with one of those imports coming in sa Governor's Cup. Walang iba kung di si Jalen Bond. Bond. Jalen Bond ng Black Water Bossing. Mamaya po yan sa ating in the spy spotlight. Kaya napakarami nating tatalakayin. So, dyan lang kayo, tutok lang. At tayo magsisimula sa pamamagitan ng mga buod, ng mga balita sa palakasan sa Sports Weekly Highlights. Back in action na sa wakas si Kai Soto sa kanyang preseason debut sa National Basketball League o NBL. Nagpakita agad ng potensyal ang Pinoy teen protege na starters and 91-87 overtime win ng Adelaide contra Cairns. May 7 points, 5 rebounds, 1 assist at isang block sa labing pitong minuto si Kai. Pumukol din siya ng isang crucial basket sa huling minuto ng regulation na nagbigay ng lamang sa 36ers. Congratulations Kai at tuloy-tuloy lang. Update din sa isa pa nating big man overseas. Pasok na sa national team ng Japan para sa 2023 FIBA World Cup si Matthew Aquino. Available para sa Akatsuki 5 si Aquino dahil holder siya ng Japanese passport. 
Kamakailan na lang, nga lang ay pumasok na rin siya sa B-League bilang local player. Nagsimula na nitong lunes ang training camp ng Japan team na magpapatuloy hanggang sa November 25. Kasalukuyang World Rank 35th ang koponan ng Japan. Dribble na tayo sa local basketball news. Simula na ngayon, araw ang inaugural ng PBA 3X3. Sampung PBA teams at tatlong guest teams ang magtutunggali sa panibagong handog ng Asia's Oldest League. Hinati sa tatlong pools ang mga kuponan na magtatapat sa anim na legs. Sa knockout playoffs ang ending ng tournament kung saan 100,000 ang naghihintay sa kampiyon. Bukod sa kompetisyon, gagamitin ang PBA 3x3 para makabuo ng pool ng national team. Good news naman sa bowling. Nagawi ng dalawang bronze medals ang mga kababayan natin mula sa 2021 International Bowling Federation World Championships. Podium finish parehas ang men's at women's teams ng bansa na lumaban sa Dubai. Bago yan, 2006 pa ang huling panalo ng bansa sa tournament nang manalo ng ginto ang ngayoy national team coach na si B-Boy Rivera. Ika nga ni Rivera, bronze feels like gold. Congratulations, Team Pilipinas! And speaking of national teams, magbabalik in sayo na ang ating mga atleta ay naku napakagandang balita. Ito ay matapos aprobahan ng Philippine Sports Commission ang pagpapatuloy ng kanilang trainings na magsisimula na sa January 10, 2022. Pinaplansya na ng komisyon ang mga guidelines para siguradong ligtas ang ating national team members. May green light na rin ang training ng mga collegiate athletes na inaprobahan na ng Commissioner on Higher Education. O Ched, nako, salamat po. Maglalaro ng mga kolehiyo. Nagpapaalala lang ang Ched na dapat masunod ang mga striktong health and safety protocols. Last but not the least, Nako, eh, player turned owner naman ang next item natin. Ibinahagi ni PBA veteran Alex Kabagnot sa philstar.com na siya na ang may-ari ng MPBL team ng Bacolod. Ang good news na yan para kay Kabaji, kasunod lang ng pagkakatrade niya sa Terra Firma Jeep. Ika nga ng 15-year veteran, one door closes but another opens. At yan po ang mga buod ng ating sports weekly highlights. Muli po, magandang-magandang umaga sa inyo mula sa music room ng ASEA Subic Beach Resort dito po sa Subic Bay at kami po ay nagpapasalamat muli sa lahat ng bumubuo sa ASEA. Of course, pinag-uusapan ang pagbabalik ng palakasan sa ating uh, landscape. Well, malapit na ang Governor's Cup. Medyo naiaantala ng konti dahil nagka-problema ang mga ilang imports sa kanilang visa requirements and of course yung kanilang travel plans including quarantine protocols. Kaya po baka mga Disyembre na magsisimula. Pero ngayon pala mga pinag-uusapan na dahil alam na natin kung sino ang mga imports na papasok. Isa po dyan, of course ang matagal ng best import ng Governor's Cup. Si Justin Brownlee na siyang magre-reinforce sa Barangay Hinebra. Kaya po ang ating tatanungin sa ating pulso ng bayan, ito po ang ating pupulsohan ha? Sa pagbabalik ni Justin Brownlee, ang Hinebra pa rin ba ang team to beat sa Governor's Cup? Ulitin ko po yan ha? Dahil sa, sa totoo lang, eh ang Hinebra ang defending champions ng Governor's Cup dahil hindi tayo naglaro ng Governor's Cup last season. So ang tanong sa pagbabalik ni Justin Brownlee, Hinebra pa rin ba? ang team to beat sa Governor's Cup. Kung gusto nyo makilahok sa ating uh, pulso ng bayan, mag-text lamang sa 0908-208-0629 o di kaya mag-post ng iyong mga komento sa aming Facebook page ng Power and Play, 1PH at ng Radio 5. Mamaya po, mapasahin natin ang inyong mga komentaryo. Alright, mga kaibigan, at this point, pasok na natin ang ating paboritong Fast Take. Ang fast take ay hatid sa inyo ng Cherry Tigo. It's fun to drive. Ngayong araw pong ito, medyo babaguhin natin ng konti ang ating fast take. Imbis na tayo magtatanong, tayo po'y magbibigay ng mismong posisyon o take 
dyan sa mga isyong bumabalot sa mundo ng sports. And of course, makakasama natin dito mga taong nasa likod ng balita ng sports, mga sports journalists na inyong sinusundan sa kanilang mga sarili-sariling platform. At of course, mga balik fast takers din ang ating mga kasama ngayong umagang ito. Walang iba kundi si Ruben Terado, si Ben Terado at si Eros Villanueva ng Spin.ph. Maganda-magandang umaga. Ben and uh, Eros, good to have you back on the show. Morning, Com. Thank you, po. Morning, Com. Medyo iibahin natin ng konti ang ating uh, style ngayong umagang ito because hindi kami magtatanong but instead magbibigay kami ng, uh, ng mga... Uh, mismong posisyon natin dito. But before we go to that, how excited are you, Ben, sa pagsisimula ng college sports na tila hindi na, ma, hindi na mapipigil? Oo, very excited. No? And finally, makakapanood na tayo ng mga college players. Alam mo, Kom, syempre, uh, I feel bad for also for the athletes, no? lalo na yung mga collegiate players na Ang tagal na tenga, actually parang two years ata silang nakatenga. No? So, so seeing na yung ating mga collegiate leagues are starting to take shape, na nagte-testing na or sorry, nag, uh, nag-vaccine na and then ito na, nabubuo na. I'm so happy for them and hopefully sana very soon makita na natin sila maglaro. Talaga. At talagang uh, iniintay na ng kar- napakaraming tao, na- napakaraming estudyante and of course mga fans ng mga collegiate leagues ang pagbabalik ng college sports. Eros, uh, national athletes are now also going to be allowed to start practices. Huli na ba tayo? Is this just right for us to catch up para sa Southeast Asian Games? I think it's just right. Uh, you know, we, we don't really, I think most of our athletes have been preparing naman uh, over the past uh, couple of years, even with the with the pandemic in full swing. So, uh, you know, I think it's just, it just formalizes yung, yung heavier training, uh, change of pace. Uh, I think it's just right. It's, it's just perfect. Uh, and lalo na, paparating na nga po yung Southeast Asian Games. And, and of course, tayo ang defending champions uh, Southeast Asian Games. Kaya napakahalaga. After a terrific performance in Tokyo, marami, mataas ang expectations ng ating mga mamamayan. And hopefully, our athletes can deliver in this uh, beginning of uh, uh, training certainly will help our national athletes. All right. Diretso na tayo sa ating uh, fast take issues of the morning. Eh, syempre, ito ay uh, mga patungkol sa inyong mga paboritong laro, especially ang basketball. Unahin natin ang ating unang take. Ito ang take natin mula sa power and play. Hindi makakabuti dahil nakakadistract lang ang 3x3 sa upcoming conference ng PBA. I will begin with you, uh, Ben. Yan ang take. Ano? and take mo. Go! You have one minute. Kom, I think uh, maraming questions on bakit nabuo itong 3x3 league. No? Eh, sinasabi nila na this is a way na makadevelop ng 3x3 players. May mga nagsasabi din, baka dahil ito to compete with jokes to go 3x3. No? But ako, para sa akin, Kom, I think this is not a distraction. I think it's an excellent idea. I think um, ito is something that would add spice to the league, something new. But uh, ang hope ko lang talaga, Com, is it really serves its purpose, no? which is to develop 3x3 players. Napansin ko lang kasi yung mga players ng 3x3 players sa PBA is more of the third stringers and mga reserve players no? sa kanika nila mga team. And I hope this would be a start na parang a way to develop 3x3 players kasi we need full-time 3x3 players kasi ibang animal nga sabi nila in 3x3 no and i think this would be a good step into the right direction na makabuo ng mga full-time 3x3 players in order for us to make it to the olympics so that's my take on i love it ang ganda i i love the honesty ang ganda ng analysis and maliwanag na may mga alam itong si Ben <laughs> tungkol dun sa 3x3 league ng PBA pero same same issue ito ang take natin hindi makakabuti dahil nakaka-distract lang ang 3x3 sa upcoming conference ng PBA ano ang take mo you have one minute Eros go Tom I don't think it's a distraction for the upcoming conference and I think it would be unfair for the players na ilabel siya as a distraction kasi uh, first and foremost, the PBA 3x3 offers a great platform for players, both young and old, for the veterans and the displaced young talents. Uh, it gives them, I guess, a pathway back to the PBA if, they, uh, if they're exposed and they show that uh, they're still uh, competent enough to play in the 5 with 5 
And for those naman, for the, the young talents who are who want to boost their stock for the rookie draft or who want to show or introduce themselves to the Filipino basketball community, it's a big playground. Um, I think it's also a much needed injection of change and innovation for the PBA because a lot of that, especially, they've been hounded with controversies over the past couple of months with rumors of players heading to the B-League or one-sided trades in the perception of many people's eyes. Uh, the PBA has been rigid and one-dimensional for the most part, and with the PBA 3x3, you're giving people something to be excited about. Well, you know, I, I share your view, Eros, and of course, Igor and Ben. Uh, I love the idea. I have nothing against giving players an opportunity, again, to use the PBA platform na makapaglaro, mabigyan ng trabaho, at mapakita ang kanilang galing na hindi pa sila uh, ika nga ilaos at pwede pang ika nga mapapunta sa PBA. Ang alam mo, hindi ko lang masyadong nagugustuhan is meron na nga eh, meron na, tama si Ben eh, meron ng chooks to go na 3x3 league. At itong mga player na maglalaro dito, karamihan dyan, eh doon naggaling eh, naglaro din doon eh. So, sino ang dinidiscover natin? Now, there are new Phil Amps coming in. That's great, that's great. That, that could have also been part of the 3x3 ng chooks. I don't know, alam ko ang lalim ng uh, problema sa, <laughs> ng ibang teams sa Chooks to go. Pero ang punto ko lang dito, sana ayusin muna ng PBA ang kanilang liga. There are so many things to do with the 5 on 5. Uh, bago nila atupagin ang isa na namang proyekto na parang ginagawa na naman. Bakit kailangan pang magkaroon ng another league? But in terms of giving platforms, I'm all for it. Naalala ko lang kasi nung pinatay din ang PBL ng D-League. Alright, let's go to our second take of the morning. Ito ay tungkol sa ating big man na si Kai Soto na kanina ay napabalita natin. So ang aming take, malaki na ang in-improve ni, ng opensa ni Kai Soto at handa na siya sa NBA. Ano ang take mo, Eros? You have one minute. Go! Tom, I think it's a two-part answer. Yes, malaki na in-improve niya. No, hindi pa siya ready sa NBA. Uh, in terms of his improvements, I think he's better at embracing contact. He's, he's hunting contact, actually. Uh, he still has a great feel for passing. Mas maganda na yung free throw shooting niya. He's better at moving off the ball. And, you know, he's more confident with his shot from outside. Uh, I guess defensively, isama mo na rin na he's better. He's a little more nimble at, at moving his feet. But, andun pa rin yung problema kasi na nag-prevent him from making the NBA. Like, andun pa rin yung blown coverages on defense. He's still very inefficient with his mid-range, and he doesn't really have a lot of counters inside, like in the post. Um, I think we have to get to a point someday or soon that Kai might not be an NBA-level player, and that's fine. Uh, he could be a high-level international player. He could be a high-level contributor for Gilas Pilipinas. And he certainly has room to grow. He can always make the NBA, definitely, but there's no shame if he doesn't, really. It's not the end of the all for a basketball player anyway. I love it. Ang ganda ng take mo, Eros. I, I like that. Fa- very positive. Who, who, who wants the NBA anyway? <laughs> I mean, as long as he can help Gilas. Same uh, second take para sa'yo, Ruben. Ang aming take, malaki na and improve ni, ng opensa ni Kai Soto at handa na siya sa NBA. Anong take mo, Ruben? You have one minute. Go! Kung doon sa sinabi mong malaki na ang improve ni Kai Soto sa opensa, I agree with that 100%. Um, nung nakita ko yung mga yung game niya no, sa preseason, I see really a good improvement, especially yung movement niya with the ball and even without the ball. No? Talagang very, nag, nag, talagang nag-improve. He has become a stretch five. Talagang pinatunayan niya dun sa kanyang preseason game. It was really very impressive. no But yung question about NBA, I mean, ako para sa akin, super layo pa. Uh, it's a process. Uh, it's a step into the right direction. Uh, definitely, he can play in the big leagues, yung mga top-tier leagues in the world. But yung NBA, medyo ano pa, sobrang layo pa. And uh, I, I agree with, rin with Eros, no? We, hindi rin naman kailangan talaga natin isipin na NBA ang patutunguhan ni Kai, no? Ang dami naman na dyan liga. So, but I, I guess in terms of improvement talagang, I think Kai is in the right direction, po. Excellent. Ang ganda rin yan. Alam natin, he is in the right direction. Yung programa ng Adelaide is good for him. Yung competition is good for him. And uh, as you say, malayo pa nga. And I agree with that. Malayo pa, but bata pa naman si Kai. Plus the fact that, alam mo, as Eros said, hindi naman kailangan ng NBA ang ating uh, maging 
maging target, basta makatulong siya sa national team, eh okay na okay na. Alam mo, nung araw, nagpost ako na Rudy Gobert is the peg. Ngayon, alam mo, and that's only on the defensive side. I'm not talking about the skills of Rudy Gobert. But ngayon, ang nakikita kong peg for Kai, sana si Ivan Mobley. Kahit si Ivan Mobley lang, pwede na eh. Di ba? Yung may galaw, tumatakbo, he, he's active, he's very, he's very mobile. Okay na sa akin, kahit na Kai Mobley na siya pagdating niya <laughs> after the Adelaide 36ers. All right, let's go to our third and final take of the morning. Ito ang uh, pag-uusapan naman natin, another big man na naglalaro ngayon sa B-League ng Japan. Ang aming take ay eh, tungkol kay Matthew Aquino na napili ng Akatsuki na maglaro sa Japan National Team. Mas mabuti pa para kay Matthew Aquino kung itutuloy na niya ang paglalaro sa Akatsuki 5 kaysa sa Gilas, Pilipinas. Ano ang take mo, Ben? You have one minute. Go! Kung I think yung chance to play for the Japan National Team is something that uh, Matthew Aquino should grab. No? Uh, kung in my opinion, honestly, Matthew hasn't really wala hindi talaga niya nakukuha pa yung mga breaks that he want he would have wanted dito sa Pilipinas and i think he is not even into a, into a strong consideration sa Gilas Pilipinas no so every time you get an opportunity to play for the national team like this one eh dapat talagang i-grab na so i think it would just be beneficial for Matthew Aquino no he would get a lot of training the competition would be good for him yung training na matatanggap niya would be really for the best Para sa kanya. So ako, I think it's a very wise move no? to choose to play for the Japan national team rather than Gilas. Kasi nga, mas may opportunity dun. At uh, honestly speaking, medyo mahihirapan siya if he plays for Gilas Pilipinas. Ko. All right. Well, si Matthew Aquino was a uh, out of nowhere. Yung story ang yan. At ngayon, nasa Japan. And now he is with the national team. Same thing, uh, Ero. Same issue. Para sa ating huli, si Matthew Aquino ay uh, naglalaro na ngayon para sa Japan National Team. Mas mabuti para kay Matthew Aquino kung itutuloy na niya ang kanyang paglalaro sa Akatsuki kesa pa magpumilit siya sa Gilas, Pilipinas. Ano ang take mo, Eros? One minute, go! I agree, Kong. Uh, tama si Sir, si Sir Ben. Uh, it just makes more sense for him from a practical and career standpoint. Uh, dito sa Pilipinas, before he gets a call-up from Gilas, Pilipinas, napakaraming work around the like, uh, it has to make sense from a logistical standpoint for him and, and Gilas itself. And the opportunity and the role has to be there. Uh, with Japan, kasi, Japan, I'm not really sure if Japan has elite big men, so he might have a crack someday if he continues his upper trajectory. Um, more importantly, playing in Japan would give him more path, a better pathway to pro opportunities to a long career in Japan, especially since he's a local man, he has a Japanese passport. Um, you know, we, when he gets the exposure and the development that he that he should be getting, you know, teams will be rushing to offer him uh, bigger contracts. Uh, the key here is really exposure. Uh, Matt hasn't really had a lot, lot of fun here in the Philippines. And, you know, for him to get that kind of exposure in Japan, it's just going to be great for him long term. Well, I agree with you. This is a great opportunity for the big man. Although, when he was talking about this on our show, he said, he still like to play. He would rather play for the Philippines. Pero syempre, na-offeran siya dyan. He's got great genes coming from Marlo Aquino, obviously. Ang tanong lang, eh, bakit hindi siya napili? Meron kayang na-miss na, na, na sila Coach Tab Baldwin with this guy? At tayo ba ang manghihinayang? Only time will tell. But right now, we're very happy for Matthew Aquino. All right? Gentlemen, maraming salamat sa inyong pagbibigay ng inyong napakatapang na mga opinion once again this morning sa Power and Play. Hope to see you again. Huwag kayong magsasawa ha, sa pagsama namin sa Fast Take. Thank you. Thank you, Kong. Good morning. Good morning. Yan po mga kaibigan natin mga kasama sa Hanap Buhay. Si Ruben Terado at si Eros Villanueva ng Spin.ph. Wow, wonderful morning to start with all of those brand new and alam mo, ang, ang gaganda eh. Very, alam mo na malalalim ang alam nitong mga to pagdating sa mga usaping, usaping sports. All right. Kagaya na nabanggit natin, we are coming to you live from ASEA Beach Resort in Subic Bay. Pabalik-balik tayo dito dahil napakaganda po ng ASEA. We've seen how beautiful the scenes are here. Napakaganda yung mga rooms, facilities. Itong kanilang music room. They have a gym right beside it and a game room right in front of me. 
unbelievable place pero merong isang area na uh, hindi pa tayo napag-usapan yun yung kinakain dito sa ASEA. At ngayon po mga kasama natin mismo ang uh, pinaka master chef ng uh, ASEA Beach Resort in Subic. Walang iba kundi si Chef Linda Junio. Kasama natin siya ngayon on the show. Magandang magandang umaga, Chef Linda. Yes, Ayan. good morning po. Uh, good morning sa Sir Noling Napakagwapo. Taku Happy po. breakfast sa ASEA uh, Beach Resort. Thank you so much, Chef. Medyo gumit na ka ng konti para makakapang Nakita ko tuloy. Chef, alam mo, sabi ko nga, ang daming magandang tanawin, ang daming facilities dito. Pero ang tanong dito, yung, yung uh, gastronomic experience. Can you describe to us, ating mga viewers, ano naman na may expect nila with their dining experience dito sa ASEA? So, dito kasi sa ASEA, of course, number one is uh, nature. Napakaganda. And then ang food po natin ay sinabay din natin dun sa napakagandang nature kasi nag-R&D kami na freshly cooked, freshly cut. So lahat ng pagkain natin may experience ninyo dito is masarap kasi nung time na pandemic talagang pinag-isipan po namin mabuti ang right. Asia food. Um, I, I, and I can guess that napakasarap talaga lalong lalo na ng almusal. Na meron kayong specialty of the house, uh, Chef. Alam ko, yung tapa ninyo is how, uh, house-made, ika nga, from your recipe. Aside from the tapa, ano pa ang specialty of the house, uh, Chef Linda? Andito kasi, para sa akin kasi, um, lahat is special kasi marami na tayong returning guests. And then may kaming pa nga po tayo na menu na idadagdag kasi may mga uh, nag extend Pero para sa akin, sa mga chef kasi, all food na ginagawa namin is special. Dessert, maging soup, maging appetizer, maging pizza. But para sa akin din, uh, kapag ka nagpunta ka dito sa salt bar, na napakagandang uh, pool bar natin din, so meron tayo din special yung uh, pizza bagnet, uh, ASEA signature na pizza, and then kung ikaw naman ayaw mong gaano mag ino meron tayong... Um, Chocolate cake na all passion. Uy, wow. Weakness ko yan, mga chocolate cake na. Nakikita natin yung pagkain, mga kapatid. Ha? Nakikita nyo naman kung gaano kasarap yung mga pagkain na yan. Uh, chef, uh, malapit na ang kapaskuhan, malapit na ang holidays. Meron bang special na inanda ang, uh, or iahanda ang siyela, ang asaya this coming holiday season sa menu? Ah, yes po. Uh, meron po, nakaplan na po kami. Number one, syempre, of course, pag breakfast, maglalagyan tayo ng traditional na breakfast Filipino like uh, bibingka, puto mungbong. And then marami pa po kami special spread na ilalagay. Medya noche at saka magkakaroon din po tayo ng lichon kasi um, meron tayong mga family gathering pag uh, ganyang Christmas. All right. Well, eh, ako, eh, nagugutom na ako, chef. <laughs> <laughs> yung mga medyan na eh, dapat mag-book na sila ng maaga ah, dahil ang daming uh, mangyayari dito sa ASEA and of course the experience is just unforgettable when you come to ASEA Beach Resort Subic. Chef, mag-ano ka, mag mag ka sa ating mga tagapanood at tagapakinig dito sa napakagandang ASEA Beach Resort sa Subic. Apo. Uh, yes, good morning. Uh, dito po sa ASEA Subic Beach Resorts. Napakaganda ng nature and then masusurprise po kayo dun sa mga pagkain namin na inihanda. So make lang na advance po ng reservation kasi yung iba hindi na talaga nakaka-reserve. <laughs> Bali siguro talagang one month kasi kahit sa akin Derek na tumatawag, minsan lagi na ako na dun sa front desk but agahan nyo na lang po yung reservation. Lalo na yung family ninyo, bigyan ninyo ng time. Napakaganda po ng ating uh, infinity pool. Napakaganda po ng dagat dito. Hindi kayo mahampas sa alon. Napakaganda. I can attest to that. Napakaganda ng pool. Napakaganda ng beach. Napakalinis. And of course, kalmado-kalmado yes, ang, uh, ang dagat. Maraming maraming salamat, Chef Linda. And we'll see you dito sa ASEA. Sa muli namin pagbabalik. At aabangan ko yung lechon, ha, Chef Linda. Maraming salamat. Linda. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Sir Nolly. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Mga kaibigan, si Chef Linda Junio, ang head chef ng ASEAS Beach Resort dito pa sa Subic. Naku eh, hindi kayo manghihinayang. It's a gastronomic experience. It's total experience for the whole family. 
come and join and enjoy ASEA Beach Resort. Alright, bago po tayo mag-break, isang paalala mula sa ating nagbabalik na tagapagsuporta ng Power and Play ang SMART. Well, unang-una pong paalala, Puso Pilipinas is a movement to celebrate the Filipino athlete powered by SMART. Follow them on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Get a chance to win exclusive Puso Pilipinas merch by sharing their Facebook page and your social media accounts with hashtag Puso Pilipinas. Isa pa pong paalala sa, mula sa SMART sa kanilang Giga Life. The Giga Life app is the latest mobile app from SMART that lets you discover and enjoy your passions with the different Giga promos. It can be downloaded and used by SMART Postpaid, SMART Prepaid, Bro Prepaid, and TNT subscribers via the Apple or Google Play Store. The Giga Play app is the new and handy streaming app naman, especially developed to bring a suite of sports and entertainment content to subscribers for free. Now, don't downloadable on the app uh, on the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Giga Play has curated live and on-demand content that are optimized to stream seamlessly on the country's fastest mobile network. The app is available to all smart prepaid, smart postpaid, TNT, and smart bro subscribers who only have to connect to their mobile data. Select the video they want on the Giga, Giga Play app and watch it to their heart's content anytime and anywhere. Yan po ang smart at ang power and play is powered by smart. We will take a quick break sa aming pong pagbabalik. Makakasama natin UAAP coaches Derek Pumarin and Gino Manansala sa power and play. Hatid sa nyo ng Cherry Loom at ng Cherry Tico. I dare to dream big. To be a voice of my generation. To inspire resilience in the face of roadblocks. And in sharing my stories, I let others share in my passion. Follow Kai's stories on Twitter and share yours with Smart Double Giga Stories. Share two times the passion with two gigabytes for Twitter and more, guaranteed every day, plus data for all sites. Simple, Smart Double. Alex, Alex, are you ready to have some fun on your first driving lesson? You're seeing live scenes from the uh, entrance of ASEA's beach resort here in Subic, kung saan kami po ay broadcast live this Saturday morning. Beautiful entrance, yung po ang lobby, and of course, uh, you're, they're very welcoming. Hopefully, 
everyone can get to see Asea Beach Resort. Maganda magandang umaga po muli, mga kapatid. Nagbabalik po kami dito sa music room ng Asea Beach Resort. I'd like to say hello to Chris Chu na nanonood sa atin ngayon. Maganda magandang umaga, Chris. Good to uh, uh, know that you are watching the show. I hope you can be on the show one of these days. We want to know what's going on with you. And of course, kung gaano ka successful ito ating kaibigan si Chris sa kanyang mga uh, negosyo and of course life after the PBA. I see him with his family. Just a great guy. Wonderful father and a great husband. Chris, I'll see you around in the golf course. All right, pinag-usapan ang uh, si Chris Chu. Yan si Chris Chu, isang produkto ng uh, napakagandang college uh, program ng Ateneo. And Collegiate Sports is back, mga kapatid. With the um, announcement by the CHED that they will begin to allow teams to practice, marami nang excited to have college sports back in our landscape. And today, to talk about that, makakasama natin ang head coach ng De La Salle University Green Archers, si Coach Derek Pomarin at ang bagong head coach ng UST Growling Tigers. Walang iba kundi si Coach Gino Manansala. Magandang magandang umaga, Coach Derek and Coach Gino. Good to have you on the show. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning po. Good morning. Coach, Coach Derek, good morning po. Maraming good morning, sa... Coach. Yeah. Amat, uh, Coach Derek. Naku, mukhang pare-pareho na tayong umahaba ang buhok, ha, Coach Derek. Ha? Dahil hindi tayo nakakapagpagupit. Ah. <laughs> Dito ba? Ermitaan nyo? <laughs> Coach Gino, mukhang... <laughs> Yun nga, eh, parang mayroong pam pamahiyan. Eh. Coach Gino, parang... Palaki ng palaki, katawan mo naman. Ha? <laughs> Bahay lang muna. Ingat, ingat po muna sa, sa labas. Oo. Pero vaccinated pero malapit naman na, na po. Marapit na talaga lumabas. Malapit na lumabas. Uh, Alright. Uh, I mean, I'll go straight to the, uh, to the uh, wonderful news na ang balita ngayon ay magsisimula na ang uh, practices. Papayagan na mag-practice sa mga college teams at ang mga atleta. Ano muna ang reaction mo, uh, Coach Derek? Uh, how excited are you? sa pagbabalik ng collegiate sports. Well, uh, we, we we've been waiting for it now for almost uh, two years. Uh, the team has just been doing yung mga online workout and sometimes it gets it gets boring. Uh, medyo kasi ang init na init na ang hirap din i-manage no. Uh, ang when it comes to mental also ng mga ng mga players. But uh, with this uh, news, at least uh, it's a uh, one mo motivation na pwede namang gamitin na makapag-umbisa ng UAP. Alright. Coach Gino, this is your first time to handle uh, the U a UAAP team. So, gaano ka ka-excited? And of course, uh, ano ba? Uh, panahon na ba? You think hindi na ito ma ma mapipigil? Uh, hindi na. Uh, Nagtrabaho na mabuti yung sa yung IATF, yung CHED. na uh, inayos nila mabuti kung ano yung dapat sundin. Uh, kailangan lang natin sumunod at uh, Excited na po ang, ang players and coaches na magsama-sama. Sobrang ano, tagal po. Ng... Sabi nga ni Coach Derek, sila uh, patuloy lang yung pag-iinsayo. Nakaka-bore na nga dahil puro Zoom na lang. Uh, kayo rin ba, Coach Gino? Ganon? Uh, paano mo minamaintain uh, yung condition at saka yung sharpness ng mga, ng mga bata mo? Ganon din po. Online and uh, individual training. Uh, From time to time, chin-check namin yung mga players and meron din kaming session sa mga psychologists para na sa mental ng mga players kasi kailangan po nila talaga. Ibang-iba uh, po yung online sa sa individual. Kaya sinrepair hmm. lang namin yung mga bata. So once mag-resume na, ito na po yung pinakihintay namin. Mag-resume na po yung training. Coach Derek, uh, ang, ang napapabalita ay mga Pebrero daw magsisimula ang UAAP and now it's about almost the end of November. Uh, do you think uh, sapat na ang panahon para makapaghanda? Especially considering na holidays ang, ang ating uh, uh, tatapatan itong December. Sapat na ba yung panahon up to February for you to prepare the team? Uh -huh. Well, in, in, in reality, no, uh, to be very competitive, medyo kapos ng konti no? <laughs> ang, ang panahon. But uh, uh, we just have to make up for it. Uh, may, make do what we have. Probably we'll, we'll do sa, like uh, twice a day training no? just to be able to catch up on things. No? Mm -hmm. uh, right now, uh, we've set up program and uh, 
openings February or March or whatever, no? Na maabot kami dahil lang ang 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 target namin is for these guys na pag nag-show up kuya na face-to-face training is uh, they are already 70%, no? 70% mm-hmm. at least uh, uh physically, no? Uh condition. So, yung 30% we feel that we'll be able to do that in like 2 3 months. All right, mga kaibigan, nagpapalik po tayo sa power and play. Medyo nagkaroon tayo ng konting uh, uh, signal disruption. Kasama pa rin po natin si Coach Derek Pumarin and si Coach Gino Manansala ng uh, Lasal at ng UST respectively. I, 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 I heard your uh, statement, uh, Coach Derek, na medyo kulang pero you have to make do with that. Gino, uh, same uh, position, medyo lalong-lalo ka na. Medyo uh, you're building, rebuilding a team. Uh, do you have any concerns na na-mike-see itong uh, panahon para sa pagsisimula ng, ng team mo patungo sa opening ng UAAP? Uh, kung ano po yung, yung oras na ibibigay, talaga pong pag-uusayan namin ng uh, coaches namin. Hindi po kami magsasayang ng oras dito. Uh, ito po yung pinakihintay namin, eh, yung magka-UAAP na talagang nakafocus kami dito. Although... Puro bago yung players natin, pero lalaban ito itong mga bata. Coach Derek, what is your biggest concern ngayon sa team mo? In terms of uh, preparation, ano ang pinakamalaking uh, well, iniinda mo or inututukan mo as you go move towards the opening ng UAAP? Well, because uh, uh, if you remember kasi nung no, nag-start ako, uh, we were only able to practice like a month, a month and a half, no? So, uh, instilling the system, tuturuan ng system, uh, hindi pa nila masyado natutu- na, na, na nagagawa at nalalaman because of yung short time na nandun ako. Kasi nung nag-join ako, March, t- <laughs> tigil na kagad eh. We, we were only played uh, two games sa uh, D-League, but uh, we were, we've been only practicing like for a, a, month, a month and a half. So, yun ang concern ko. But uh, there will be a lot of new new faces also for the South uh, this coming season so new system will be implemented no so medyo yun ang yun lang inaano ko uh, magiging problema ko sige ko yung yung paituro kaya tapos ang oras pero i think uh, we by doing double effort no double time uh, i think we'll be able to do it uh, coach Gino nabasa ko somewhere na pa, may plano ka na pagpatuloy yung mayhem system ni uh, Coach Aldin Ayo, uh, of course, meron kang sarili mong estilo na nakita ko when you were with St. Clair uh, sa Naasku. Ano ang biggest concern mo in so far as uh, you're getting into the growling tigers ngayon? And of course, uh, mga bago, mga mukhang hawakan mo. Apo, so ngayon po, kami pa-prioritize namin yung fitness ng mga players and yung chemistry. Yun po yung tututukan namin ngayon. Apo. Mm-hmm. Very, very important, obviously, yung, yung fitness dahil marami <laughs> aming uh, kuponan na nasisira pagka nagkaroon ng injury, lalong-lalong na sa kanila mga mga, mga mahalagang players. Coach Derek, uh, let's talk about the team. Uh, very busy kayo, even Coach Gino, <laughs> ng recruitment. Everybody in the UAAP during the off-season. Dahil wala kang magawa, hindi. Eh, ang nangyayari dito, puro yeah. recruitment. <laughs> Balita. So, let's talk about who's new Who's still there para sa inyong mga kuponan? Uh, Coach Derek, I, 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 I've heard that you have, you, of course, you're, you got new faces, Mark Nonoy, uh, but you have old faces like Jordan Bartlett, and dyan pa rin si uh, Ivan Nell, and of course, marami pang iba. But sino ang mga naiwan, sino ang mga bago, Coach Derek, sa kuponan ng De La Salle Green Archers? Uh, right now, uh, ang mga, mga naiwan, si Balti is still decided but has decided no uh, thank 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 to him thank to him na nag nag find in final year niya tatapusin niya sa Lasal no and then uh, uh Wak is there si Manuel uh si Baba 
Uh, there are, mga, ang mga bago ko usually si... Kasi there are a lot of new faces now. Uh, mm-hmm. There are still a big question like the Bartlett and Bates are still a question to babalik because of the situation dito sa atin, no? And uh, they're still not sure if they're, if they're coming back. So, okay. so far, yung iba lang ang veterans na nasa akin ngayon na iwan. Si, si Bates, si Manuel, no? Yung pala ng software. Ang mga bago ko, really, no? no, 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 no and uh, Ivan. No, Nelly, no, yan ang mga bago ko nandiyan. Oh, si Ivan Nelly. Uh, what about yung mga bagong recruit mo, uh, Coach Derek? Si Kevin Kiambao, si La Raven Cortez, uh, yung Penny Estacio, at saka yung Jared uh, Abada. Yan ba mga prospects pa lang yan? Yan ba ay maglalaro sa junior team muna o patuloy na yan sa senior team? Uh, si Kevin will Kevin Kiambao will not be available this coming season 84, no? Uh, mm-hmm. He will be eligible for season 85, at least still in grade 12 now. Okay. Uh, but the rest of the guys that you mentioned are all eligible to to play. So mm-hmm. we we have like uh, about uh, 22 in the in the pool. Uh, in the pool in the pool. Yeah, we have a players pool. We call it players pool. Then oh. Those 22 players are are all eligible to play. So I I can I can choose from those 22 to cut down to 16 uh, by the start of my U80. Who among the new players uh, have impressed you? May, may narinig tayo about the brothers uh, Phillips, uh, yung Deshaun Winston. Sino ang mga naka-impress sa'yo so far, uh, Coach Derek? And so so mo, far, uh, uh, so far, si yung Winston brothers will be able to help, no? Uh, they, they'll be able to, he- to, to add heights up and ceiling sa, sa team, no? Of course, Deshaun has uh, played the... Uh, uh, three seasons in, in, in the NCAA Division One, so he'll be able to be to be a good uh, addition. No? He'll be playing two seasons for us, and of course uh, Nelly and uh, and uh, Nonoy. No, I think uh, um, backward will be loaded. I say, and uh, with Deshaun Winston there, uh, we'll be able to you know uh, add more add more options. No, for another decision because he can he can play point and he can play uh, uh, the second guard. And of course, yung anak, uh, ano ba to? Anak ni Don Don, Isaiah Hontiveros? Yes, he's still there. He, he's also in the pool, si Hontiveros. But, uh, but uh, we'll, <laughs> in reality, we still haven't seen him no? in, in person because uh, because of the pandemic. We were able to recruit him during nung, nitong pandemic. So they are all the pandemic recruits. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ang dami niyan eh. Ganon din naman sa UST, no, Coach Gino? Ang, ang daming uh, mga pandemic recruits na tinatawag ni, ni Coach Derek, no? But ikaw, yeah. malaki ang talaga sa inyo. Of course, alam natin na nawala na si, si Mark Nonoy na ngayon ay nasa Lasal. Renz Abando, CJ Cancino, Brent Paraiso, si Ira Batilia. Ang dami niya mga veteranong nawala. And you're almost building from scratch. My first question is, anong balita sa inyong foreign import? I mean, yung foreign player ninyo? Greatly affected by the departure of our solid veterans, especially si si Chabio recently oh. ng paalam. Oh so, nga. Eh. Ayun, we just have to accept it and make do with our uh, yung mga remaining na veterans namin tulad ni, ni Ando, ni Sherwin Concepcion, oh. and then tas yung mga new recruits po namin. Sila Joshua Fontanilla, Brian Santos, tapos yung galing po sa training pool namin sila Manaytay, si Manalang. Then, ito na yung mga new recruits. Sila Jordi, Liliano, Royce Mantua. Yun po. Yung LA Casinillo, kasama na ba yun? LA Casinillo po is nasa UK. Ah, uh, so parati pero yung ba ay uh, nag-commit na sa inyo para maglaro na rin, coach? Meron po siyang hinahabol na ano eh na kailangan magstay pa po siya sa sa UK for hanggang February. Uh-huh. Kailangan po muna maayos po nila yon pero sa basa ko hindi po siya ma, makakalaro ngayon ng UAP. All right. What about si Kian Baklan nang uh, nanggaling sa Dela San Sobel? Yeah, Kian Baklan na uh, graduating siya ngayon na grade 12. Uh, magaling yung bata, may uh, Grabe, grabe yung bata. Nakita ko yung mga highlights niya kasi ngayon hindi pa talaga kami makapag, makapag face-to-face. Uh, hinihintay lang namin yung, yung bubble dito sa campus. Tom. Okay. 
Ayan, yan ang, uh, yan ang plano uh, mo para sa Kuponan mo. Alright. Let me ask you, uh, Coach Gino, ano ang so far, what do you like about your team and uh, ano ang klaseng team na, na binibuild mo dyan sa UST? Uh, just stick on the rebuilding and the hard work needed to make the team competitive. We will take things one step at a time, a game at a time to see how they progress. No promises po, but we will work hard as there's much more to, ano pa, mila, basta as far as coaches naman, we will enjoy working hard with each other and our players to bring out the best in them and develop their potential to their fullest. It will be an exciting and challenging year ahead wow. of us po. I'm sure, dahil lalong lalo na, alam ko ikaw, Coach Gino, you're a very hard worker. I've seen the way uh, magtrabaho ka in the past. And of course, mga kupanan mo ay nag-compute na rin, lalong lalo na sa players. Coach uh, Derek, uh, what do you like about the LaSalle team this year? But well, I think uh, right now uh, the spirit is different. <laughs> uh, we want to bring in the the the, the old animal spirit now, and uh, you know uh, we we were we were I'm trying to change the the, the old culture, no? Dahil parang uh, they're just uh, parang attitude na losing is okay, no? Losing is not <laughs> okay, no? So uh, we have we have a standard uh, as far as basketball in in, in La Salle, so. We have to maintain that standard, and uh, you know the animal spirit is what we need. And uh, refusing to lose is what we have to show. And uh, we just have to prom uh, to show the people and the the self community that uh, we're not gonna roll over and die. Uh, and uh, we will be very competitive by this coming season. Well, grab and support, of course, and LaSalle community, and everyone is so excited about the new season. Uh, and with you at the helm, alam nila na uh, ibang iba ang uh, pamamalakad na ngayon knowing that coach Derek has been a, hindi lamang nakapagpakampyon sa Lasal but also sa iba pa niyang pinuntahan ng mga koponan. Let me ask about the plans for this new season coach Derek. Uh, ano ang plano mo sa practices ngayon na papayagan na yan? May mga kagaya ni coach Gino, he mentioned the a bubble training. Kayo ba nagpaplano ng ganyan? Yes, yes. Uh, you know, we 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 plan this uh we've been prepared we've been prepared this already like 3 4 months ago. So we're just ready to go to do when they give the signal, then we're just ready to enter now. So handang handana, even all the protocols, talagang ready na kami doon. Uh, Anong gagawin niyan, Coach Derek? Sa campus lang? Ganun ba yan? Uh, uh, we have a, a, a dorm, okay, sa isa lang sa, uh, for basketball team only. Uh, okay. That's that's the, the compound ni, that's the compound ni, ni Boss Danding, uh, no? right. the late oh. Boss Danding Guangco, no? And uh, oh. even when I was playing for La Salle, doon kami naka-quarters eh. So that's only purely for basketball. So oh. definitely, walang may expose kung ano kaya pagka na, na bubble doon, talagang kami lang. Hindi makapasok. Diba? Coach Gino, uh, paano yung bubble mo? Anong plano mo? Doon ba sa Espanya gagawin yan? Dito po sa, sa loob ng campus, uh, almost uh, 60% na po yung... Uh, tinatapos na po nila. We're waiting na lang sa CHED kasi magbibisita po sila eh. Kasi alam ko mga six schools na po yung nabisita nila. Uh, yung inintay na lang po namin sila dito para bigyan kami ng go signal to to enter the bubble po. Alright. Ano magiging focus ng training sa bubble? Yun po. Yung, yung fitness po muna nila talagang importante. Uh, tapos magkakaroon tayo ng Christmas break pinag-aaralan po namin kung ano po yung magandang gawin para sa mga bata kasi hindi po na ayaw namin po aksayin yung yung oras gawa ng UAP is napakalapit na po uh, oh, nga. we need to perform talaga dito eh, talaga ma managing the time and the schedule ang mangyayari ngayon napaka-challenging para sa inyong dalawa yes, uh, Coach Derek, uh, in terms of vaccination, lahat ba, kayong dalawa, lahat ba ng players ninyo uh, will be vaccinated? Will be that be a requirement? Yes. Uh, it, all, all my players have been vaccinated na. All of them, including the coaches. Coaches, staff, uh, you know, utilities, kung sino man. Uh, people at the dorm are all vaccinated. Uh, so, wala kami problema. Matagal na kami vaccinated. So, we, we, we've done that part. Uh, uh, mat Tagal na. So, we, as I said, we're already for that. We're ready for that. Coach Gino, ganun din ba sa inyo sa USD? Uh, 95% po is vaccinated na po sa amin. 
Mm-hmm. Meron meron pa pong isa na lang po itong first week ng December. Uh, right. Lahat po okay na rin po. Bukang handang-handa na talaga sa pagsisimula ng practices. Ang tanong na lamang, eh, kung paano magre-respond ang mga players. Before I let you go, I want to ask a little bit something about uh, you. Yung mga, uh, I know yung, kayong pareho ay sort of bago. Eh, si Coach Derek, hindi na bago yan. Eh. Bagong luma yan. Eh, kasi <laughs> nagalit na sa yan. <laughs> Eh, nagbabalik sa Lasal. So, medyo bago pa rin yung feeling. Coach Derek, I'll begin with you. No? Second time around, sabi na is always sweeter. Pero para sa'yo personally, mm-hmm. what's the difference this time around handling the Green Archers? Well, uh, it, it, it's, a, it's going to be a big challenge for me. No? We've got a lot of things to prove uh, handling this team. Uh, you know, Lasal has only won uh, two championships in the last nine years. We've been eliminated. Uh, in the final four in the last two seasons. So, as I've said, it's really a big, big task for me uh, to be able to to bring back uh, LaSalle. And uh, not like when we, when I started coaching LaSalle, uh, first year pa lang namin sa UAP noon, first time. Right? But this time, uh, as I mentioned a while ago, na may standard ng in-expect ang mga LaSalle community. So, that's a big, big the challenge for me. And, uh, you know, I, I'm ready to face the challenge, as I've said. And, uh, uh, we're, we're, we're ready to go and, and show what we can do this uh, coming year. Coach Gino, uh, you have been a champion nung nakaraan. I, I, like I always, I, like I have said, uh, and you've also been an assistant coach sa UST. Uh, so medyo meron ka ng feel kung paano ang UAAP. Pero ito ang una mong pagtungtong bilang head coach. Anong ibig sabihin nito para sa iyo, Coach Gino? Uh, kung noli, it, UAP is a big league uh, Naglakapaglaro din po ako nung 99 hanggang 2003. Iba po ang, ang UAP. And then yung mga coaches po talaga is talagang ano yan, A1 yan. Uh, mga best coaches yan sa Pilipinas. Uh, although nakalaban ko na sila halos uh, sa mga tournaments, sa uh, D-League. Uh, may feel ko na rin po sila eh. Na, feel, na ano ko na po, alam ko na rin po yung mga ano nila, yung mga strategies pero sabi ko nga pagtatrabuhan namin to ng mga coaching staff happen. All right. Well, to both of you, may pressure ba? Coach Gino, ikaw muna. Is uh, there pressure to deliver? Sa may pressure po so pisa pero sana naman po ako sa sa pressure na yan. <laughs> Pagandahan ko po ito mabuti. All right. Coach Coach Derek, ikaw, may, may nararamdaman ka bang pressure to deliver para sa community ng Lasal? Well, uh, you, you know, pressure is kakambal ng coaching. Eh. <laughs> so, so, so when you when you accept a job, the pressure kasama yun. Parang pagka nag-firma ka ng kontrato to be a coach, kasama yun, nakalagay doon pressure, malaki. <laughs> <laughs> so, kakambal yan, kakambal yan. So, I've been coaching for more than 35 years and the pressure is there for more than 35 years too. <laughs> Never goes away, tama no, Coach Derek. All right. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, as a final parting shot dito, Coach Derek, uh, sa tingin mo, what would make for you, ah, what would make a successful season for you itong uh, parating na UAAP? Uh, I think that the attitude of the players will really play a big part now uh, because they have to cooperate this time because we'll be going in a short, uh, short, short uh, preparation. And uh, I think the commitment is a, a big factor too. Uh, dahil uh, going to a bubble is not, it's not a joke. And I know that there will be stress, stressful ang bubble. But uh, we need a lot of sacrifice, and uh, and that's what we need uh, to be able to be competitive and to be able to be successful uh, this coming season. No? And of course, of course, uh, the team chemistry is very important, Simon. So hopefully that uh, the old, the veterans will be able to blend with the new guys, and the new guys will be able to blend with the with the old veterans like uh, Baltasar. No? And uh, hopefully that Balti can take the lead this time. All right. Coach Gino, ikaw, um, what will define a successful season for you para sa UST Growling Tigers? Knowing that you're rebuilding, ano, may goals ba kayong sinet? What would be a successful season for you personally? Ayun lang po. Uh, sundin lang po namin yung, ano, yung plano namin dito. Kasi sabi ko nga, very short itong preparation. Uh, we have a new team. Di ba? Rebuilding po tayo. Uh, kailangan lang namin ma maanap yung own identity ng mga, ng mga yung team namin from there trabawin namin sabi ko nga talaga kung puro bago ito 
puro bago yung, yung bata. <laughs> Pero ano kami, uh, positive naman na uh, malalaki, lalaki nito. Uh, yung dati medyo under height ito, malalaking players ito. Kailangan lang talaga trabawin. Hindi pwede yung ano eh, alam mo na, yung shortcut hindi agad-agad yan. Kailangan talaga trabawin sila. Trabawin oh. sila. Lalong-lalo na kung kaharap mo si Coach Derek. Medyo. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, mga, mga kaibigan. Uh, maraming salamat, Coach Derek Pumarin. Coach Gino Manansala for taking the time out. Good luck sa UAP. Good luck sa inyong practices. I hope na walang uh, uh, maging problema. And of course, stay safe lagi sa inyong mga gawain. Maraming salamat. Thank you po. Thank you, thank you, Com. Anytime, anytime. Maraming salamat. salamat. Po, mar- God bless po. Ang head coach ng De La Salle University Green Archers, Coach Derek Pumarin, and the head coach ng USD Growling Tigers, Coach Gino Manansala. Wow. Ang ganda, exciting na. Nakakatuwa na nagsisimula na ang college sports. Uh, malamang daw, February ang season. So, maghanda na kayo. At sana nga, papasuki na rin ang mga fans sa mga laro. All right, bago tayo mag-commercial break, Mag-short break muna tayo ha, sa, at sumilip sa mga uh, trending videos. And of course, yung mga uh, nagugustuhan nating mga sports online features dito po sa ating Stop and Pop. Puso at tibay ng loob ang ating itatampok sa ating unang video. Panoorin po ninyo to ha. Ito po yung laban. Mga bata pa to ha. Siguro to mga, mga late late grade school to mga grade 7, grade 8. Pero may isang matangka dyan yung number 23. Pero tayo, eh grabe ito dumakdak yan. Ang galing. Magiging player talaga yan. Pero saluto tayo dito sa maliit na player. Na? Panoorin nyo yung number 44. Kita nyo naman kung gano'ng kalaki yan. At sinalubong niya, yung 23, tumanggap siya ng charge foul, offensive foul. Yan ang puso, yan ang tapang. And sabi ko nga, sa aking isang tweet post, sabi ko, I will take number 44 anytime on my team. Grabe ang puso at tapang ni number 44 sa ating stop and pop moment. All right, mga kaibigan, we will take a quick break. Sa aming pong pagbabalik, makakasama natin ang head coach ng Barangay Hinebra Kings, live si Coach Tim Cohn sa Power and Play. Hatid sa inyo ng Cherry Tigo at ng Cherry Loom. I dare to dream big. be a voice of my generation, to inspire resilience in the face of roadblocks, and in sharing my stories, I let others share in my passion. Follow Kai Stories on Twitter and share yours with Smart Double Giga Stories. Share two times the passion with two gigabytes for Twitter and more. Guaranteed every day, plus data for all sites. Simple, smart, above. Alex, Alex, are you ready to have some fun on your first driving lesson?
ang Power and Play ay hatid sa inyo ng Cherry Loom, ang yerong may aluminum. Sa ganitong pabago-bago ang panahon mga kapatid, sobrang init tapos biglang uulan. Kailangan natin ng matibay at protektadong bubong. Dapat ang bubong ay yerong may aluminum. Kapag may aluminum, tsak na pang matagalan. At isa lang ang alam kong dekalidad na yerong may aluminum. Yan ang Cherry Loom, tibay protektado sa pang matagalang yero. Cherry Loom, ang yerong may aluminum. Cherry Tigo, paano mo masasabing nakaka-enjoy i-drive ang sasakyan mo? Isa lang ang sagot ko dyan. Siyempre kapag ang minamaneho mo ay Cherry Tigo 7 Pro. Luxurious ang exteriors at comfort-filled naman ang interiors. Intelligent dahil meron itong automatic tailgate opening, engine start, at climate control na pwede mong makontrol using its smart key. Perfect pa pang long drive dahil meron itong large sunroof, HD touchscreen, wireless mobile charging, at 360 around view monitoring. Pro na pro ka with the Tigo 7 Pro dahil available na rin ito for as low as 88,000 pesos all in. Hanggang 120,000 din ang cash discounts exclusive ngayong September. Open pa for free test drives kaya ischedule mo na ang appointment sa Cherry Dealer today. Cherry Tigo 7 Pro, fun to drive! Joyride, ang bago ninyong kasundo. Dahil ayaw naming nahihirapan ka, book Joyride Motorcycle Taxi now and experience hassle-free commute. And it's never too early to start getting ready for the holidays. Now's the right time to plan the perfect gifts for your loved ones to avoid the holiday rush. For all your delivery needs this coming holiday season, Joyride Super App is here. Now available in Metro Manila, Metro Cebu, Laguna, Baguio, and soon in Bulacan. So download the latest Joyride Super App now. Elms Resto Bar Group, home of fried eating. With branches at Elms Tapas and Winery, located in Calia Bistro, Commonwealth, Quezon City, and Elms Grill and Bar in Poblacion, Makati. You may call 0977-157-0499 or 0966-854-4048 or visit their FB and IG pages at Elms Resto Bar Group for reservations and inquiries. Skin your face and body anti-aging center with branches at Wilson Street, San Juan City and Alabang Town Center, Muntinlupa City. For inquiries, please call 0917-890-1640 or 0977-809-8886. ASEA Subic Beach Resort. Experience the getaway that you deserve and dive into limitless happenings rejuvenating experiences, and gastronomic adventures. ASEA Subic Beach Resort. Power and Play would also like to thank the Umami Bowl, your go-to for Japanese rice bowls, and Likhabi, weave by weave, hand in hand. Check out their IG pages. And Power and Play is powered by Smart. Live Smart! We're seeing scenes from the beach ng Aseya Subic uh, Beach Resort. And what a beautiful morning here. Just to welcome you all sa Power and Play. Gawin niyo pong kas kasama ngayong Sabado ng umaga sa inyong pag-almusal. It's just a wonderful place to visit. And we certainly hope that you can all come over and see this beautiful beach resort in Subic, ang Aseya Resort. Maganda magandang umaga po muli mga kapatid. Nagbabalik po kami sa Power and Play. I'd like to thank also ha, nga pala Carlito Sisig Seafood Restaurant. Yan po ay matatagpuan sa Show Boulevard. Uh, bukas na po sila sa dining and thank uh, and uh, take out. Maraming salamat kay Paring Elmer Ngo, kay uh, Lance. Lance Ngo and of course Captain uh, Carlito Cernal. Uh, yan po sa Carlitos. Also, uh, isang announcement yung... Um, Yung Elms Resto Bar dyan sa Evergotesco ay magsisimula na sila sa Elms Seafood. Paluto din yan ha, sa Evergotesco. November 23 ang simula po niya. Ha. Marami salamat kay uh, Ate Malu Yambao sa kanyang uh, pag-imbita. November 23, abangan niyo po yan. Elms Seafood dyan sa Ever 
Gotesco. That's all I'd like to say hello to uh, Adrian Flores, ang editor ng Perfect Drive PH. Uh, their issue is now out, yung pong golf magazine na paborito nyo. Free yan ha, sa ating mga makikita nyo yan, sa ating mga golf clubs. Uh, Perfect Drive PH, ang kanilang cover ngayon, yung Maserati. Ha, yung uh, kotse, a beautiful eight-page issue ng Perfect Drive PH. Alright mga kaibigan, at this point, we have with us, uh, he, doesn't need, uh, he doesn't need too much of an introduction. <laughs> Everyone knows him and we'll be talking about the coming Governor's Cup. We have with us on the show our special guest today, no other than the head coach of Barangay Hinebra and my good friend, Coach Tim Cohn. Morning, Tim. It's an honor and a pleasure to, uh, to be on your show. Truly, truly, it always is. I'm always looking forward to coming on. You know, you know Tim, you know, Coach, I, I wanted to invite you all the way here so you can enjoy this beach resort. Uh, with, with the family, you know, and it would have been a great time for you just to, but, you know, think maybe the next time you, you guest on our show, yeah. you'll be with me we're, on that. We're, we're say. We're in, <laughs> I was just going to say, we're in the midst, we're, right now we're in the midst of prepping and, and uh, practice. We're doing two-a-days. Uh, this is the first time we've done two-a-days in two years. So oh. wow. um, it's a really, really busy time for us right now. And I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm loving, I'm loving being busy. Ah. For, for the first time, yeah. it's like it's Feels like, like we're really back. fish back in water for you. I I know that you're 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 the kind of guy that just wants to work work and work. That's why you need some time here in Asia. But anyway, Tim, here we go. <laughs> let, me, let me ask you first before we go to your plans for the governor's cup. I just want very quickly, you know, you had a well, sort of a disappointing uh, uh, Philippine very cup. Let's let, let let's put it that way because you were the defending champions. You had you got in a, a guy like Stan Hardinger to beef up your team. You had some really good players coming back. You know, injuries hit you. But, you know, your own assessment, Tim, what were the factors that, uh, you know, sort of brought this disappointing result? Well, you know, basically, you know, when your players don't play well, it's basically because they're not prepared well. And if they're not prepared well, that's that's really a coaching issue. And, and uh, you know, looking back on it, you know, it's so easy to look back on hindsight. But looking back on it, truly, we weren't prepared to play that conference. Um I remember that uh, we got started late. Uh, um, Christian was injured when he first came to the team. So we didn't have him for the first three weeks of practice. We only had him for like 10 days of, of practice before the conference started. So we really didn't get that gelling that we wanted. Uh, um, and we didn't really push. Maybe it was because we came off a couple of championships, but mm -hmm. we just weren't pushing like we had in previous conferences. And uh um, you know, we took it for granted and, uh, and that's on me, you know, you, you just can't take things for granted. And I feel what felt we took things for granted and the other teams just passed us up. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, they didn't, and you know, you know, it's always that old thing that if you're not, you know, if you're right, if you're in and running, you know, don't look back because someone's going to be passing you by. And, and we did a lot of looking back and we allowed teams to pass us by and, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, we didn't deserve to be uh, one of the top teams in that in that conference. We just didn't yeah. deserve it. We know that. So we, we, I looked at your numbers, Tim, and you know, uh, obviously those numbers were not of your liking. You uh, particularly both ends, you know, uh, offensively, defensively. Offensively, you were eleventh in terms of scoring. You were dead last in terms of bench scoring. Defensively, you were outscored by your opponents, 88-83 uh, uh, on the average. What does this tell you? What, what, what do those numbers tell you, Tim? Well, you know, I mean, we have to find out whether that's an outlier or it's really us. And, you know, I, it, it, one thing that we do know, we, we, need, we need to make some adjustments and changes to, what, to the way we play. And mm -hmm. that's what we are doing. Um, uh, you know, we need to get everybody back healthy. That's for sure. Um, mm -hmm. And we, again, like I said, we need to have better preparation. And I feel we're doing that this time with, again, our two a days, like we're back. Uh, before the last conference, we were traveling all the way to Patangas. And I just don't think we took the practices as seriously as we, as we needed to do it. So, you know, I'm willing to grant everyone a pass on that last one. Uh, mm -hmm. It was one of those things where what could go wrong went wrong for us uh, yeah. <laughs> in terms of, you know, the COVID and, and the protocols and, 
Um, you know, we were the first one to get hit by the protocols to start the conference. And so we were locked in our rooms for literally in our rooms for, for five days while everybody else was practicing. And then we mm -hmm. came out, had to play basically within two days. So we only had two practices before we started our first game. And mm -hmm. that, that just got us off on a, on a bad, uh, on, on a, on a, on a bad, you know, bad wrong step. So, okay. We took a, we, we were bad. We took a, a, a couple steps, you know, we took a step backwards right. and now we're going to take a couple steps forward and uh, um, we're not going to panic, you know, um, but we do need to keep up with the Joneses. We need to keep up with the talking Texas and the Sam McGill's and the Magnolia's and the, you know, basically everybody. Yeah. And, and, uh, and a lot of people out there. And so we got to figure out a way to, to, to pick it back up. I want to ask you about that because you picked up a, a guy, uh, Sydney on, on Woodbury, uh, for a trade with Art De La Cruz. And it seems to me that uh, that's, you know, just a perfect pickup for you because, as I mentioned, you were dead last in bench scoring last year. And, I, you know, it seems to me that despite the fact that, you know, you were, um, your, your team is loaded with talent. Obviously, a lot of the injury bugs hit you, a lot of, of players uh, getting into health protocols. But a guy like Onwubere obviously will help your bench. Uh, how do you see Onwubere's role? And do you think that this is going to address some of those problems that you had last Governor, uh, Philippine Cup? Yeah, well, you know, I think our, we had a really young bench for the most part, except for the guys like uh, like Jeff. Jeff Jeff Chan was, uh, you know, he was a veteran off the bench, but he, he only played half that conference because he was in protocol situations as well. And then when he came back, he wasn't, you know, he, you know, you sit at home doing a protocol for 10, 12, 14 days in a room and not allowed to leave. It's really hard to stay in shape, even if you're doing Zoom workouts daily. So, you know, him coming back was, was, was having a problem. Um, and then, of course, when, when Japheth and, and uh, uh, got injured and we lost Scotty, you know, that took the depth away from our team. Uh, we had to start guys that we didn't, wouldn't normally start. Um, but, you know, again, it just sounds, I, I don't like talking about it because it sounds like it's all about excuses. You know, we yeah. made excuses for this or that and this. But, you know, the bottom line is, is that Sydney, yeah. um, you know, we, we really loved Art De La Cruz in many, many ways. I mean, uh, not only was he as truly, when he's healthy, he's a great player. Uh, he was always that guy who was going to replace Joe DeVance for us. Uh, uh, that Joe was going to groom and he was going to play that kind of role for us. Um, but we just couldn't keep him healthy on the floor. And, uh, um, and we just, you know, we kind of ran out of patience. So we had to move forward. So we went after a younger guy uh, who we felt has real good potential. Um, he's physically imposing. He's a really strong guy. Uh, he has a, a, a good three point shot, not a, not a lights out three point shot, but he's shooting well from the perimeter. He finishes around the inside. We feel he's just kind of hitting his stride right now. And we're hoping we're getting him at the right time and then he can really step up and help. I, I'm not sure he's going to be a guy who comes off the bench. He may be a starter for us mm -hmm. uh, because uh, we really believe in his skills and his skill set, um, mm -hmm. especially now that uh, Aljon Mariano is still out and, and un unable to play at this point. No, Are he'll you be out for a number of weeks still. Tim, you know, Tim, when I look at your lineup, uh, especially your starting lineup, and you're talking about Sydney maybe getting into that starting lineup, uh, LA is 37, Stanley is pushing 35, Joppet is pushing 35, uh, JDV is 39, Stan Hardinger is the youngest there at 32. Uh, of course, Jared Dillinger is not a starter, but he's, he's 37. Is this a concern for you? Well, yes and no. Um... It's a concern because uh, guys are starting to play beyond their prime. You know, prime is really anywhere between 29 and 30. It used to be 29 and like 32. That was the prime. Of, but the way people take care of their bodies these days, you know, there's, a, there's an extension now. I don't think you guys lose it. I don't think players necessarily lose their prime around 32. They can play at still a very high level of 35, 36, uh, even up maybe to 37. But after that, it starts, no doubt, you start to dip and your role has to change uh, on the team. Um, and I think that, you know, I think the organization is aware of that. Uh, the management is aware of that and they're looking for 
solutions. And, and um, that's one of the reasons we brought in Sydney because he mm -hmm. is a, a, a fresh, someone who can give us, uh, you know, fresh legs and someone who's entering, he's 29, entering his prime. Um, but, you know, you know, we, we're, we're kind of right now, we're, we're, we're kind of like, we have players who are finishing their prime. And then we have the other side of, we have really, really young guys uh, who are still not Party. entering their prime at That's this right. point. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, that, you know, you, you have to start adjusting at that at some point. And, uh, um, that's what I mean by we have to continue to stay up with the talk in Texas and the San Miguel's and, and things like that, because, you know, talk in Texas made a lot of changes over the last couple of years, bringing in poor Adam and bringing in Williams, you know, uh, getting a top draft pick like that and, uh, and still having, you know, some of their vets like Ryan Reyes and, and Kelly Williams, and of course, Jason, you know, that that's, they've got a really good mix. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, Sam Miguel has brought in, you know, CJ Perez and, and Terrence Romeo and Mo Tautua. Uh, so they, they, they're they slowly making that transition into being younger. And that's just something that, you know, again, our organization, our management is, is aware of, and we're looking at avenues to do that. Mm -hmm. But we don't feel at this point, you know, we feel LA still has a lot to give. We feel Japheth and Stanley have a lot to give. Uh, so we're not pushing the panic button yet. But yeah, and, we, there's a realization that we that there, there, there needs to be done. And it's and, not that easy just to snap your fingers and do it. Absolutely. I know that. In other words, well, you're not saying that this is uh, this is urgent. It's something that will just happen right away. Because we've seen how San Miguel is starting to break up their death five. They've already broken it up. Mm -hmm. uh, so do you think that Hinebra is on its way also to that? No, not not necessarily. Not with our core players. I think our core players are still are still at a very very high level. And uh, um, but we do need some youth and athleticism. There's no doubt about it. And uh, I mean, every team does. Every team goes through this. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, we what won five five championships in the last uh, four years or something like that. And. and two out of the last three before this last one. So, you know, your, your team pays the price for that. And uh, whether you're the old San Miguel Grand Slam team back in the, you know, back in the uh, the late 80s, um, you know, with Hector and Samboy and, and you know, all those Ebets and all of, you know, you eventually they have to change and they have to move on. Right. Uh, right. Alaska, the same thing. We had to do that with Johnny and Jojo and Bong. And, and now you look at Pure Foods, you know, with, with – James gone and, and PJ gone and Ping gone. You know, that was the core of that, uh, of that, of that Grand Slam team. And, uh, of course, Joe DeVance is there. And Joe DeVance is now, I think, 38. So, you know, you, you do have to continually uh, change that. But it's, it's not that easy. There's usually a dip before you're able to get back to where you want to get to. All right. It's hard to stay up there all the time. Let's talk about your Governor's Cup now, Tim. Uh, obviously, you are the defending champions and uh, yeah. have the imports uh, last season. Well, first of all, how significant is it for you to have the, the imports back and the Governor's Cup playing again? Well, I can't think of anything more exciting than to have imports and fans back in the stadium. I mean, it, 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 it's that was one thing that I just want to mention. I think that one of the reasons we... You know, we got off on a bad, just to just to revisit the bubble just for a minute. Um, we got off off to a bad start, and we just had a hard time getting our energy up to a level that needed to get there. And you know, people always in, in the first bubble, people always asking us, you know, what was it like not playing without fans? And when we kept, we had a quick start, and we had a, it was we just didn't have that real sense of urgency to have the fans because we had great momentum that we were generating ourselves. But right. when we lost that momentum in the bubble, the second bubble, um, boy, we really missed our fans then. I mean, <laughs> just, I mean, I, I always, always, I, I, I'd lay in bed at night and say, man, if we just had fans, they, right. they could help me out because I'm not able to generate the, the enthusiasm that I needed to have. And that's something we've always had with Inebra. So the mm -hmm. fact that we are coming from a down conference and now going into the import conference and having the fans back, uh, uh, for me personally, from a coaching standpoint, 
I mean, there could not be anything better. I mean, well, this is just incredibly exciting to have both back. Of course, our import is special. You know, everybody, people bring back imports. We bring back Justin. It's a big difference. <laughs> and it's not like every other import. So that's a good uh, fit. That's a good fit. And, and I want to ask you about Justin Brownlee. How is he? How is his condition? When is he arriving? Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> But has, has he been playing? Has he been playing before this? Uh, yes, I spoke to him a couple of days ago, and and he, you know, he played in Dubai during the pandemic, and of course he got COVID. He said 11 of his 12 players, 11 of his 12 teammates <laughs> on the team got COVID when he oh was in Dubai. Oh my! And uh, um, they just weren't that strict back then, and everybody was falling to the side. Um, but um, Since that, he's come home. That was last year. So he's been home. He said he's been playing in leagues around, but, you know, uh, smaller leagues around the United States, just trying to stay in shape and keep playing. So uh, uh, he claims to be in good shape. And uh, um, we were having trouble securing his visa. Uh, but apparently now we've, we've pretty much solved it and he should be on a plane. Now I just heard today, of course, that the, uh, the, The quarantine has gone from five days to three days. Right. Um, so um, I'm, I'm hoping that applies to the imports as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, so now he'll come in and only go three days. Uh, we were really scared that we're going to lose him for another five days. But right now he's scheduled to come in on the 25th, but I think he's going to be leaving earlier. Um, maybe this weekend and we can get him in on Monday or Tuesday. Coach, how, how do you see the fit of now that this will be the first time that they will be playing together? The, the fit of Justin with Christian Stan Hardinger. Well, you know, Christian is a dirty work guy. And I think one of the things that we tried to do with him um, in the bubble, being in the all Filipinos, that we really tried to make him a, a true go-to guy. And he's really more of a dirty work guy. He'll do all the dirty work for you. Um, and he's going to score, but he's not going to, you know, if you, if you force him to be the scorer, it's going to be more difficult. Form. He's not an actual scorer. You know, he's not going to shoot threes. He's not going to pull up for jump shots. Um, you know, it's really, you know, he's, he's, he's limited to, to offensive rebound and putbacks and, and putting the ball on the floor and driving and running the floor, kind of like a, a bigger uh, Rudy Hatfield, if I may use the, the thing. You know, he, he's really a guy that, that plays with great energy and he can defend just about anybody. And uh, he's a great denial one-on-one -on -one defender. And we're trying, we're, we're trying to kind of, he was a round peg and we're trying to put him into a square hole because we lost Japheth. We, um, you know, we lost Scotty. So, you know, we were looking for scores at the time and we were looking for an inside presence. Now that he has Justin with him mm -hmm. and we have a healthy group around him, I think that he'll be able to play the role that, that best suits him. And, uh, Um, and I think that will be a much, much better fit with, with someone like Justin around to take the scoring uh, off, of, off of Christian, allow Christian just do the things he does really, really well. Christian's a guy that does things really, really. He, has, he does a few things really, really well, better than anybody. Yeah, and, well. um, but, you know, he, he, he's, he's kind of a black and white guy. You know, he has the real strengths and he has other weaknesses. Like, again, the, the lack of perimeter game. Um, right. And you just have to play to his strengths. He's got numbers to prove that. He's the leading rebounder in the league. He's, he averages about 14 points a game. Of course, one, one thing that he's also very error prone. But, you know, again, that, as you say, that he's, he's not the kind of guy that you, you, you can force uh, just to do many moves on the floor. But let me, let me ask you, Coach. Uh, there are many things that obviously you'll have to work on in a very short period of time. Uh, How much of a concern is that for you, especially about getting real practice games in there? Well, uh, yeah, we're still not allowed to do practice games. So uh, uh, at this point, uh, we've requested a couple of times. Uh, we had one scheduled against Alaska, but uh, we couldn't get permission to do it. So, um, but I've never been a real practice guy, practice game guy anyway. I mean, we might do what, two or three at, before conference starts, but Uh, I'd rather do this stuff on the in the practice gym that we want to get done in terms of drilling and and uh, um, creating habits, things of that sort. So again, the fact that we're back to two a days and we we can get a lot done 
when we're we're doing two a day practices. Uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, heavy focus and concentration. Um, I just believe in two a days more than you know having one long practice. I think over a period of time, players lose their intensity, lose their concentration when mm -hmm. they're practicing a really long time. So what we do is we short, we keep the practices shorter, but we do multiple practices throughout the day. Give them a long two or three, four hour break between practices so they mm -hmm. can recover their energy, recover their focus, and we can go on again. And, mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, and I've talked to all the players and they seem to like this schedule that we have more than a normal everyday, you know, through the week uh, type of, uh, right. of schedule. That's so good. I feel like we're getting a lot done and I feel like uh, uh, we're getting you to where we need to be. All right. We have about four minutes left in this uh, in this interview. And so let me ask you, uh, Coach, there, there are many fans who are asking so many questions. But who do you who is the most intriguing import fit right now for you that you're going up against? Wow. Um, you know, I mean, there's there's a really a lot of interesting Mike Harris is here. You know, and, I mean, there's like three or four guys that have won import awards before. Um Paul Harris is here. It's going to be great seeing Paul. In fact, we're going to be practicing uh, across from each other. He's with Rainer, uh, with uh, Phoenix and Phoenix, and we kind of share the same gym. We have different courts, but we're in the same building, so we're going to see Paul. And, of course, Paul was the one Justin replaced after Paul was injured. Right. Um, kind of like they call it the old Wally Pip uh, syndrome <laughs> when Wally Pip was replaced by Lou Gehrig, and then Lou Gehrig became, you know, the absolute superstar. Legend. That's right. Yeah, the legend. And, and of course, that's happened with Justin. Poor Paul. But Paul is a tremendous in his own right. And, uh, um, you know, he, he, he can do everything as well, just like Justin. So, you know, Phoenix is really going to like him. And they have a lot of weapons over there. The beautiful thing about imports is that they, you know, they, they, they take what is normally oftentimes your, your weakness on your team and they make it a strength. And mm -hmm. when they're able to do that, that's when the whole team, you know, levels out. And and uh, and now you're competing for championships, and that's what Justin has always done for us. Um, he's always come in and, and, and filled out a certain kind of weakness that we have, and and, and elevated our game. And yeah. so that's really going to be the test of those imports coming in. Can they elevate the team? It's not about just coming in and putting up numbers. I mean, any mm -hmm. import can come in and put up numbers. They're going to take a lot of shots. You're going to put up a lot of numbers. You're going to play a lot of minutes. You're going to get a lot of rebounds. It's not mm -hmm. about the numbers or the rebounds. It's about fitting the right piece of the puzzle in your team and elevating the players around you. And that is what makes Justin so special. And in my mind, what made Sean Chambers so special, uh, you know, in, in those years that we kept bringing him back. And uh, so it's, it's, it's uh, you know, you can bring in the superstar imports, but if they don't elevate the team, um by filling in the weaknesses of the team, they're not going to be successful. Right. Well, you know, I have a lot, a lot of more questions, but I'll, I'll allow two questions coming from Hinebra Nation to come in here, Coach, because there were so many fans asking questions about uh, when they found out that I was going to interview you. The first question that they're asking is, who was, who's the top three imports that you've ever handled uh, in your coaching career? Wow. Well, the top two are obvious, you know. Yeah. Justin Don't and Sean Chambers. All right. Um, but One. it would be a lot of, I had a lot of other, Marcus Blakely was great. Um, Rochelle Beautiful. Ellis was great. Mm -hmm. uh, Derek Hamilton was great. Uh, um, gee, I, I'm having trouble remembering uh, Devin Davis. Uh, oh, I yeah. remember him with the dreads yeah. and the gold teeth. Oh, he yeah. was awesome. Uh, I, I've had a lot, you know, I've been around for 30 years and basically, you know, you get, you get two imports a year and then you change a few. So I've, I've had a few really, really, you know, I had an opportunity to really coach some great guys, but I, I got really the top two is Justin and Sean. I got another question and here from Smart Art, uh, also from Hinebra Nation. Do you believe that a coach should con uh, continue to evolve in order to be successful? And how have you done that? I've seen that. I saw that question on Twitter. And I saw them ask you that on Twitter. And I thought, wow, what a great question that is. And I was going to ask uh, that. Yeah. You know, you, you got to keep up with the, with the young guys, you know, the young guys are coming in with, with new ideas and, and, and um, you know, they're, they're constantly evolving. The game itself evolves. Um, I take a page out of Eric Spolstra's uh, uh, book and that, you know, he is totally a learner. 
You know, he, he's just constantly learning. He goes and visits other people's practices. He goes and watch football, American football practices. He learned the pace and space from watching the Euro- University of Oregon Ducks football team. Um, wow. That's how he developed his pace and space uh, thing with LeBron and with the, with the three right. guys. Right. He did that watching that team. He spent two weeks with that team watching their practices and got it into his mind. So, yeah, you're constantly evolving, constantly. You know, we've gone, you know, the, the beautiful thing about the triangle over the years, it was an evolving offense. Um, but at some point we had to kind of let it put it aside and move on. And so we moved on and, and went to what we call a continuity offense. And um, now we've, we're, 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 we're going again to another thing. And, and uh, uh, I don't want to tell anybody because <laughs> then the other coaches will know, but you know, we're, we're, we're evolving into something yeah. else now. So yes, coaches have to evolve and uh, you're not going to stick around for 30 years doing the same thing you did in 1989 that you're doing in 2021. So uh, yeah, you have to evolve. And, uh, um, and so I, that's one thing I, I, I think, I, you know, there's certain things fundamentally that you don't change because that's fundamental. Those yeah. things are unchanging, but you're constantly adjusting, evolving. And uh, even the way you treat players, the relationships you have, I, I'm much different with players now than I was in the 90s. Um, you know, so there, there's a constant evolve, uh, evolving going on. As a final question from the fans, uh, the NBA has had chain, uh, rule changes uh, in terms of interpretation. If possible, is there a rule in the PBA you would like to change in terms of interpretation? In terms of interpretation, hmm. Well, I think we need, and they're starting to, I think they're need, I think because the offense is getting such an advantage, I think the charge, the take charge rule has to be better enforced uh, to give the defenses a better chance. Um, you know, you, you also see the, what they're doing with, you know, guys like James Harden in terms of he's trying to initiate contact to create fouls and the P and the NBA is taking that away. And I think that the PBA, I think the PBA has always done a pretty good job of that. Right. Uh, um, right. But, you know, that's something that they can they can continue to look at. But for me, it's the take charge drill. I think the take charge right. drill has to come back in a big way. Started two in this last bubble, and I can see continue to do more. Well, as a final question, Tim, uh, and I'm asking this also to the fans in terms of our Pulso uh, You know, obviously with Justin Brownlee coming back, uh, you know, with a lot of things happening in your team and a lot of things to prove you're the defending champion. Is Hinebra still the team to beat in the Governor's Cup? Um, you would ask me that. If you asked me that at any conference, I would say no. <laughs> um, but because I just don't believe that, that, that you want to go into the conference saying you're the team to beat because that puts you yourself on a pedestal and then you, you're, you're, you're not doing the everyday work. You, you're assuming things. And we don't want to assume anything. Um, you know, I think the way after the way Talk and Text played, you know, obviously um, they're the best team at this point. I think Sam McGill with June Mar uh, now, you know, a few months re- removed from his injury, you're going to see a much different, much better June Mar. Um, I think that there's some upcoming teams. Northport was, I thought, really exciting with Bullock and uh, Monzon and, and, of course, the addition of Greg Slaughter. Uh, that team and was really Arwin, Arwin, and Arwin now, and now Arwin there as a, as a leader and a guy who can who can feed the the ball to Slaughter like uh, he used to to uh, Junmar, so he he can be a big impact plus defensively. Um, you know, I think there's some teams out there that 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 you know Morocco has been emerging more and more, and and uh, and then the young guys like uh, Monz, uh, Monz, uh, Monzon, no. Yeah. The kid, that, the kid at Terra Firma, you know, I, I don't think we haven't seen him because he broke his hand. Uh, oh, yes. and so he's, he's going to get a full conference and uh, they picked up some guys. So, I, I mean, uh, there's a lot of teams out there. Right now, uh, Chuck has his team playing the best of all of us. So uh, until we can prove otherwise, I think the Chuck's team is the team to beat. Well, I'm sure, you know, regardless of what you say, not only are the Inebra fans hoping that you will be the team to beat, but I think a lot of people still consider your team as one of the best, and I, especially with you at the helm, Coach Tim. Uh, it'll always be a contender. It'll always be a disappointment if you're not in the finals. You yeah. are 
Hinebra, and of course, the fans will always be there. Hopefully, be back in the arenas to support Barangay <laughs> yeah. Hinebra. Coach Tim, thank you so much for this uh, for this fun time again, as usual. Very informative. Good luck on the season. Good luck in the conference. And I hope to see you in Asea one of these days. Well, I hope I'm. I hope you bring me back because we won the championship, and you want to talk to me again. <laughs> we will. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Right. Right. Okay. Thank you. All the best. Yep. Vigan, ang ating kay Vigan, one of the best, the winningest coach in the PBA, Coach Tim Cohn, ng Barangay Hinebra. Wow, terrific uh, interview again. Uh, fine gentleman, and I'm really hoping that uh, this season will be another fun time for the Barangay Hinebra fans. All right, bago tayo lumipat po sa ating mga susunod na guest, uh, muli tayo magpunta sa ating uh, mga trending videos online sa larangan ng sports sa ating Stop and Pop. Ang second video po natin ay uh, siguro ang tema dito is like father, like son. Ito po ang anak ni Lebron James. Hindi na kailangan ng DNA test. Sa windmill dunk pa lang ni Brony James, alam na na siya po ang anak ng one of the greatest basketball players of all time, King Lebron. Walang ka-effort, effort off the backboard ang slam dunk ng panganay ni LBJ at kapansin-pansin din ang pagtaas ng kanyang paglundag. Yan po si Bronny James sa ating Stop and Pop. Wow! Unbelievable. Pag nakita natin sa NBA yan at nagkasabay yung mag-ama, eh ba kasaysayan na naman ang gagawin ng mga James. Talking about imports, talking about American players, the Governor's Cup is coming and of course, the imports are back. And we got to talk to one of the imports that will be coming to the Philippines to play. We caught up with uh, Jalen Bond two nights ago dito po sa ating In the Spotlight. His name is Bond, Jalen Bond. At siya ang ating itatampok sa ating panayam sa Power and Play. Good day, Dylan. Good to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. You are coming uh, to us from Philadelphia. Yes, all the way from Philly. My goodness. My favorite uh, basketball city. <laughs> yeah, a lot, a, lot of, a lot of history back in Philly. So I'm, I'm glad to be from Philly and representing you know, Philadelphia, you know, just to play across the country. So looking for I'm a big Philly fan. Uh, I follow the Eagles. I follow, of course, the Sixers. Right. Uh, uh, you know, uh, of course, Rocky Balboa and, and everyone else. Yeah, it's a lot of history. Such a great town. You know, uh, before we talk about your personal stuff, uh, you are going to be playing in the Governor's Cup, and uh, this is the first time we will be having imports in the last two years. So everybody's excited. Uh, you've yeah. never been to the Philippines, Jim. Never, never, never been to the Philippines. Always wanted to, though. I'm, I'm happy to, you know, finally be able to play there now. Absolutely. And this is your first time to play in the PBA. What have you heard about the PBA, Jalen? Um, I heard it's a, a real competitive league. I heard the fans, you know, love basketball there. That's something I'm, I'm looking forward to. Um, just to get out, you know, just compete again, you know, against the, you know, the other Americans there, you know, the, the other Filipino players there, you know. Just, you know, blessed to have this opportunity just to continue playing basketball, you know, doing something that I love. So, looking forward to it. You are actually one of the few new faces that are coming back. Uh, most of the imports that are coming back are uh, returning imports, uh, returning foreign players that will be playing in the PBA. But, of course, uh, you know, it, it's good to see a new face. You have shades of LeBron James in you, especially yeah. with that beard, Jalen. It's good to see... Uh, our first uh, to get a first look uh, of Jalen Bond. Jalen, have you known any other imports or personal friends of yours who have played in the PBA? Um, I had one um, high school teammate, um, CJ Aiken. I think he had a little stint over in the Philippines. Um, I probably played against a couple guys that you know have been in and out of the Philippines. 
Um, they all had, you know, positive things to say, you know, great league, you know, great fan base, um, beautiful country. Um, so everything that I'm, you know, looking forward and looking forward to, you know, get be a part of. Like I mentioned, many of the imports that are coming back are veterans in this league, particularly uh, four-time best import Justin Brownlee, who is actually, you know, one of the top imports that are coming back with his team, who have uh, the Ginebra Kings, which is the fan favorite. Uh, you have NBA veterans, KJ McDaniels, you mm -hmm. can Moore, Paul Harris, Mike Harris, Brandon Brown, and of course, the latest one, a newbie, but an NBA vet, Shabazz Muhammad, plus many more. Uh, are you, how excited are you to be playing against these guys uh, here in the PBA? Yeah, I'm real excited, you know, just looking forward to, you know, compete, compete against them guys. You know, every guy you named are, you know, high level guys. You know, I consider myself as a high level guy. So I'm looking forward to, you know, competing against them guys, you know, day in and day out, you know, and hopefully we, we play well as a team and hopefully we come up with some wins. Are, are you confident playing against these uh, vets? Because oh, yeah. you're you're 28 years old. You know, uh, most of the time we see a, a lot of imports coming here who are a little bit older, you know, having played in many, many other countries. But you are you are a relatively young guy. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm confident against, you know, anybody I play against, no matter, you know, where I'm at, you know, across the world. Um, I believe in myself and I believe in my abilities. Um, so I'm just going to, you know, display that, you know, the best way as possible. Well, you know, uh, let, let, me, let, let me talk about your uh, background now. Um, Jalen, as I said, you were born in Philadelphia yes. and you studied in Temple, which yes. is the main campus is, of, of course, in Philly. Oh, there it is. Uh, <laughs> Charles. <laughs> All right. Uh, who, who did you grow up? I assume you're a Philly fan. Yes. Who, who did you grow up idolizing from Philadelphia? Um, so basketball wise, it would definitely be Allen Iverson. Um, you know, he was one of the guys we looked up to. He, um, him. Then also having the opportunity um, as Aaron McKee, he was my assistant coach while I was at Temple. You know, another uh, Philly guy. You know, during, had it, almost the same path. You know, uh, went back to Temple, played for the Sixers. You know, um, had a great career in the NBA. Um, so those, you know, those were guys I looked up. You know, within the basketball community in Philly. All right. Um, well, football wise. Um, I was definitely an Eagles fan growing up, and I like you know uh, Brian Dawkins was one of my you know favorite football players growing up. Yeah, well, that's those are big names. You know, I know Aaron McKee is now the head coach of Temple. Yes, that's right, and uh, he, he was a, a terrific role player, of course, for the Sixers. In your family, uh, how many how many siblings do you have, uh, Jalen? I have an older brother. I have uh, two younger sisters and a younger brother. And are they all athletes like you? Uh, they actually are. Yep, they all play all play sports: um, basketball, football, baseball, field hockey, lacrosse, track. We we do it all. <laughs> wow, the sporting family. Yeah, we and do are that. they? Oh. No, so I'm the only professional right now. The other ones, my older brother, he used to play. Um, he stopped after college. Um, but I have another younger brother that that wants to play professional. He's in high school right now, and he's pretty good. Who was the most influential person in your family in so far as your basketball career is concerned? Um, in my family, I would say my my mother, she she pushed me, she had me, you know, doing everything, taking me to all practices all over, games, you know, just that con consistent travel and just always being there for me. She was definitely the, the biggest part and the biggest motivation I had, you know, growing up and just wanting to be successful, you know, for my family, especially for her. All right. Well, uh, you know, part of that, of course, your mom has been a big influence to you. But of course, as you were proceeding with your career in basketball, was there any particular player that you patterned your game from and who, who, who you idolized? That, that, yeah, so, that? yeah. So on the court, um, I have flashes of, you know, uh, vintage Chris Webber, 2001, 2000, you know, Chris Webber. I like um, growing up, I, um, I wanted to dunk like Vince Carter. Um, and then, you know, as I got older, I wanted to play like LeBron. <laughs> Who doesn't oh, yeah. play like LeBron? So but as I got older, that's something I tried to, you know, emulate his moves the best way I could. Those are huge names in in, uh, in basketball, in it. Yes. Uh, uh, NBA basketball, of course. And uh, many of us know uh, these names and, of course, idolize them ourselves. You played in Temple uh, in your collegiate uh, stint. 
in yeah. the NBA, and uh, that's a terrific program, of course. We know how great the Owls are. Uh, played in the NCAA tournament as well. What was your most important lessons that you you got from playing college ball in Temple? Um, I would say, you know, don't take anything for granted. You know, it, it goes by so quick. So you have to enjoy every, you know, every moment that you have. Um, unfortunately, we came up short in our NCAA tournament, you know, on a buzzer beater. It kind of still hurts me to this day, but um, it was, it's, all, it's all a blessing, you know, just to continue and just to play basketball and, you know, just to keep getting better and keep growing as a person and on and off the court, you know, that's something I take a, a lot of pride in. Did you have any prominent teammates uh, that moved on to the NBA or to professional basketball outside of yourself, of course? Yeah. Um, so I had a teammate, um, Will Cummings. He's doing well um, overseas as well in Euro Cup, Euro League every year. Um, one of the best players, you know, point guards overseas. I had another um, teammate when I was in um, at Texas, the school I went to before Temple. Another guy named Sheldon Mack, he played in the NBA for a little bit. He's actually overseas as well, um, playing in France. So a couple of notable guys, you know, a few of my other teammates, you know, still chasing their dream overseas as well. A couple guys in the G League as well now, too. Well, you, you tried the NBA draft back in 2016. Of course, that was the year where Philadelphia picked up a, a guy from LSU, Ben yep. Simmons. Yep. The same uh, class as you entered. Uh, unfortunately, you are undrafted. Yeah. How that experience just going through the draft? And, of course, do you still maintain that NBA dream? Um, yeah, for sure. You know, that's always, since I was a kid, the you know, goal was always to get back to the NBA or play in the NBA. So and that's going to be my dream until I stop playing basketball. So I, I would never, you know, start doubting myself or give up on myself. So any path or any route I have to take, you know, to still attain them dreams, you know, that's what I'm going to do. So we're looking forward to, you know, continuing. Well, talking about paths, uh you have taken the international uh, path, of course. You've played in Italy, uh, in the United Arab Emirates, and of course in Bahrain. What? How do you find, uh, you know, being a traveling pro in uh, worldwide traveling and really playing and assimilating a lot of cultures? I love it. Um, just like you said, just to experience so many different cultures, doing something that you love, playing basketball, playing a game, essentially, um, it's a blessing for sure. You know. I don't consider myself lucky. I consider myself blessed. So just to keep continue to do that, experience different cultures, learn how different, you know, people go about their day-to-day -day lives, um, different culture changes and everything. It's, it's definitely something to get used to. It takes time to get used to, but I wouldn't change anything. What do you find most pleasurable or enjoyable being a traveling pro? Um, sightseeing. I love sightseeing. You know, <laughs> um, going to, you know, the, the most popular places and, you know, each, um, each country that I visit, that's something um, I like to do a lot. I take pictures. I keep them on my phone. I have pictures on my phone of places all over that I've been. Um, so hopefully once I'm done, you know, retire, when I'm retired, you know, feeding down the line, I'll just be able to look back at all the memories that I made throughout my career. And that's something I'll be happy for. Well, uh, tell us a little bit about your favorite places you've been to, especially when you played in Italy and uh, the UAE and, of course, in Bahrain. Yeah. Um, so I would say so far... Favorite place sightseeing wise would definitely have to be Dubai. Um, that alone, it, growing up, I never thought I would be, able to be go there. You know, even on vacation, but to, to, just to go there and play basketball, and then just to go around, go to the deserts, um, different um, buildings that they have down there, and just to see how progressive they are and building new things every year. It, it, it's definitely a sight to see. Absolutely, you know, with with uh, all the beautiful. Uh, scenery in Dubai and of course all the majestic buildings that they've built there. It's right. one of the places to visit indeed. Um, when you talk about traveling traveling pro and as an international player, what on the other hand is the most challenging part for you? Um, I would say being away from family you know, for a long duration of the time. I'm a real family oriented guy um, so I, I enjoy that family time I have while I'm home. But, you know, they all understand that this is something I love to do. This is something that I wanted to do since I was a kid. So they all are very supportive in anything I, 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 cha I chase to do. Um, so I would say that's definitely the most challenging part, just being away from them for a you know, long duration at the time. What about the food, uh, Jalen? <laughs> Were you able to adjust to all yeah, the food that I, you, you've been to? Yeah, I would say 
I don't really have a tough time finding foods that I like. Um, I'm not really a picky eater, <laughs> so <laughs> I'll be able to find something anywhere, um, and I'll, I'll be able to enjoy it. Well, I hope you're adventurous because uh, the Philippines is a melting pot of uh, a lot of uh, very good dishes, and I hope you you certainly try out many of our yeah. local dishes here in the Philippines. I'm looking forward to it for sure. The last time you played was in uh, Bahrain, about you know, in 2020, and it's been almost a year since right. then. Uh, how have you kept busy? How have you kept in shape? You look like you're in terrific shape, uh, Jalen. You are about 240 pounds, and that's your fighting weight, as uh, I've read. And you know, how how have you kept that uh, sharp uh, during this pandemic? Yeah, just working out daily. I have a few uh, friends that are trainers, um, so I'm in the gym with them, in the weight room with them, you know, just trying to stay fit, trying to stay ready, you know, for this upcoming season. You know, like you said, it, it's almost been a year since I um, haven't played a game, but that's why I'm definitely looking forward to get, you know, back out on the court and compete with my teammates. All right, well, let's talk about your teammates and your team, the upcoming uh, team that you will be joining, which is the Blackwater Bossing. Uh, I'm sure you've um, you've... Uh, tried to read up on your team. They mm -hmm. had a well, a, uh, a very challenging last two conferences in the PBA, and they hold, of course, one of the most uh, unpopular records, which is a dubious record of 19 straight losses, which they are trying to snap. Does right. that concern you uh, at all with a rebuilding team that you're joining a rebuilding team, a new coach? several new players, and of course, that dubious record of 19 straight losses. Yeah, it, it gives me extra motivation for sure, you know, just to get that first win out the way. Um, something that I'm going to work hard for, you know, I know my teammates are going to work hard for as well, and we just come together, keep continue to build up chemistry, and hopefully that translates into a win for us. Um, your coach, your current coach, I mean, the, the guy who coached you has said that you can practically guard any guy on the floor. You yeah. are a guy who takes pride in his defense. Jalen, what do you bring to the table for Blackwater? Um, just somebody that's going to play hard, you know, that's going to compete on both ends of the court. Um, just going to give, you know, give my all every time that I'm out on the court. I got to, you know, that's for myself. I, I know that to be the best player I want to be, I just have to, you know, lock in defensively and um, be able to score offensively as well. So things that I'm, I'm looking forward to. So. Can you describe your game for us, um, you know, for the fans who are eagerly waiting your return or your your your, uh, your visit to the Philippines? Do you play inside? Are you physical? Do you, do you like to shoot threes? Are you three and deep? Describe your game for us here, Jalen. I would say. Yam po mga kibigan ng panayam natin kay Jalen Bond. Medyo na ubusan tayo ng oras, but again, he said that he's a guy that's very excited to play for Blackwater Bossing. He's a guy that can play anything that his coach wants. And, uh, and of course, uh, makikita natin na uh, yung physique nito si Jalen Bond ay uh, napakaganda. Obviously, uh, one of the imports to watch out for in the coming Governor's Cup. Uh, talking about the Governor's Cup, ang ating pinusuhan ngayong araw pong ito ay tungkol sa Governor's Cup, ang Hinebra ba ang team to beat pa rin sa darating na Governor's Cup, ah? Ang sabi po ni, uh, medyo may mga nagpadala sa atin ng komentaryo, sabi ni Dabs Alvarez ng Maasin City, Southern Leyte, para sa akin, champion pa rin, uh, Hinebra, ngayon darating na Governor's Cup, dahil uh, nandyan pa rin ang balik import NBA caliber, proven and tested na si Justin Brownlee. Hinebra pa rin, never say die, pero give credit to other teams, very talented, competitive imports. Manaki, uh, J. Rafael Lapid, sabi niya, uh, Com and Lex, TNT and Meralco will be strong contenders for the upcoming PBA 2021 Second Conference. From Mel Santos, sabi naman ni Mel Santos, SMB, Brandon Brown champion. <laughs> sabi naman ni Roel, uh, uh, hindi ko makuha yung family, parang ano. Uh, sabi ni Roel, Para sa kanya, Magnolia, SMB, at Hinebra. Ba, puro San Miguel <laughs> ang mananalo. Uh, well, malalaman po natin yan. Malapit na malapit na ang Governor's Cup. And we certainly are uh, looking forward to a wonderful uh, conference with the imports back in town. All right, dyan po magwawakas ang ating uh, show this morning mula sa ASEA Beach Resort 
in Subic Bay Freeport. So, naging nagpapasalamat kami sa lahat po ng Tika Asea, si Ma'am Melissa, si uh, Chef Linda, uh, si Ma'am Dayan uh, Narisma, and of course, paring Romel City, maraming maraming salamat sa patuloy na suporta uh, sa Power and Play. Hinebra Nation, thank you for joining us also and supporting Power and Play. Sa inyong pong lahat, tuwing Sabado, lagi nating sinasabi, bawal ang masungit. And of course, sa lahat po ng ating gawain, ad mayorem dei gloriam, all for the greater glory of God. Ito po, kami po ang 1PH, teleservisyo para sa Pilipino. Happy Sports Weekend, mga kapatid. More power, more play. Malaki ang galing na meron tayo Ilang tagdang likas nating talento At magdala ng saya sa mundo Sa harap ng pagsubok ay di susuko Para sa pangarap tayo'y pusigido Pagpapit ang gilas na kung magpatalo Ipagdiwang natin ang Pilipino Mula noon at hanggang ngayon, talento natin ng vida. Mula sa simpleng bakuran hanggang entablado natin ipakita. May pagsubok man ng Pinoy, pinalalakas ng saya. Sana tayo sa pulo, chumbe, shibay, lakay, kaliga. Sama-sama pakita, ang galing natin katropa. Sa kapwa ko, Pilipino.